Hello and welcome to the Squeaky Bum Time Podcast with Mike and Laurent. It is Tuesday, March 1st, or is it February 29th? I never know. In this episode, Carabao Cup is not crap. Who knew? Pielsa out, Marsh in. Americans in the Premier League, not good. Does anyone know what the fuck a handball is? But first, Mike, Abramovich said he has no ties to Putin, but somehow he's in Belarus negotiating on behalf of Ukraine. That's weird. What say you? I don't, I, I, what? Mm? Uh, it's been an, an interesting week for the embattled Chelsea owner, right? Uh, we're actually going to have a guest on Thursday's show, oh, Ollie Carpenter. An expert. Um, and and a, a resident expert in both Chelsea and uh, the intersection of sport and and politics. Uh, and he fascism. Runs, <laughs> and fascism. He runs Goalytics, uh, so check them out on Twitter. Uh, but you'll hear a whole lot more from him on Thursday, or Friday, I should say, um, yeah. about that whole situation. It's interesting. It's interesting to find somebody like this because we're just as famously once called two idiots with a microphone, um, <laughs> yes. and it's going to be interesting to see him chat with us. And I, as I was sort of talking to him in our like direct message conversation, yeah. uh, I was like, "Explain this to me like I'm five, right?" So <laughs> that's what we're going to get. Yeah, um, that's what we're going to give to all of our fans and, and yeah. all the listeners. So we're excited for that. Yeah, but yeah I mean, it's kinda, been we kind of we're a little we're a little lowbrow. We're a little highbrow. We're a little European history. We're a little we're bit, a little bit history, country. But, we're a little yeah, bit rock and but roll. I really <laughs> love the intersection of war and and Abramovich and Chelsea and all this stuff. It's amazing. There's, if I could be on the show, it would be all World War II references. But first, I'm going to do the scores. Of Here course. I go. Uh, Leeds nil. Four to Spurs. Harry Kane's pass was incredible. We say mm -hmm. goodbye to Mr. Marcelo Bielsa. The Leeds fans love him. Was he good? I don't know. We have Newcastle beating Brentford at home. 2-0. There was a red card in the first 10 minutes. VAR got him. But the good news, the positive news of that was the return of Christian Eriksen. Yay! Brighton, my beloved Brighton, are scared of going to their level. Aston Villa get back on the schneid, get off the schneid. They re-schneid. They're schneiding. They win 2-0. They're doing well. Ollie Watkins looking good. And oh my god, Watford nil, nil to Manchester United. This was a battering. Holy shit. Cristiano Ronaldo might be finished, but it's a nil-nil battering. But Watford, great and powerful Watford, took four points off Man United and got their coach fired. What? 1-1 <laughs> Burnley. The Burnley renaissance continues. They stay unbeaten in their last seven and manchester city struggle in a one nil victory at goodison park there was some controversy in this game and the sunday game because we had the venerable uh carabao cup on sunday was west ham one wolves nil this was another statement game wolves sliding they're not as good west ham staying in the fight for the top four Woo! and that takes us to the carabao cup what say you, Mike, on Carabao Cup? I could not be more thrilled with the outcome. Um, it was fantastic. I, I frankly, <laughs> I, I am not a fan of either team, and that's putting it very diplomatically. I uh -huh. fucking hate both teams. I would obviously, if I had to choose between the two guns in my head, I hate Chelsea far more. Yeah. Um, local and local 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 rivals. <laughs> yeah, and but I just I was like, whatever, man. I ugh. I ended up watching. I didn't watch the first half. I watched the second half and then extra time. Um, and then of course the penalties and Edward Mendy for me was man of the match, mm. like not close. He was mm. unbelievable. Kelleher was good too, by the way. Mm. And the only other person who had a claim to it is, is the fourth official because <laughs> he has his flag up so many times. Right. So for I me, mean, weirdly, it could have been, it kind of should have been Mason Mount and Pulisic. Pulisic was creating chances early sure. in the 10 roll. Uh, I thought Havertz was, I thought the attack from Chelsea was really very good. Yeah, no, I mean, they've got a, a lot of good play in really game. good attacking players. So that's not, that shouldn't be surprising. Right. But mm. um, I want to get right to the, the, you know, the storyline. Can I, can I, I first guessed the shit out of that? Go ahead. No, you, before I, I have go. one thing, I have one thing, and I, and I and I I don't want to go down this path, but I think we really should. There were across football, across the league, a lot of really really cool moments around the uh, Ukrainian players playing around the league. You have Yarmolenko and Zinchenko and Menyenko. I don't think is that's his name. 
on Everton. Teams coming out with Ukrainian uh, flags on, no war. I really enjoyed the messaging all around uh, football. And football has really stepped up and condemned this whole thing. Pretty amazing. Uh, Of course, FIFA dragged its feet and took an extra three days to bar Russia from the World Cup. I'm not giving anybody any credit, especially FIFA. Okay. No, not FIFA. FIFA. <laughs> FIFA has human rights violations still happening in Qatar, I believe, as they build stadiums upon dead bodies uh, so that they can host this World Cup in fucking November. The yeah, IOC yeah. waited three days after the Olympics to uh, to denounce Russia while they let them play under the ROC title, where they get to let them stand on the podium by themselves or some shit. Um, I don't, no, they don't get credit. Any but but anyway, too. I do. The, no. the genuine stuff was cool, like Zinchenko, sure. Zinchenko crying. You saw in Portugal, there was cool stuff. Yeah. Anyway, back to the Carabao Cup. That is our Ukrainian moment of the day. We're thinking about it. It's not not important. But Thursday we'll cover it. Go. Sorry. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole because I could, and I could take a divergent into the right. But anyway, let's go back to the Kepa sub. Um, oh, yeah. Edward Mendy is the man of the match. Now, if this is a 2-2 game and it's helter-skelter back and forth and there's, you know, maybe in some some shakiness in the back from Mendy, fine. He's your penalties guy. I get it. It's not a big deal. But he was a brick wall, as he has been for Chelsea most of the season. Especially the first 10 games, he was carrying them. Yes. and, and Well, I'd even say throughout because, he, and, you know, and, and he just won a penalty shootout at AFCON. Lest we forget that. Three weeks ago. And the argument for Kepa is, and there's plenty against it. I'm going to get to that in a second. But the, the plenty, the, the argument for it is he is, he was basically humbled. And he be, he had to basically become – he had to he'd carve out his niche. And in, in not playing as much as Mendy, he became far more uh, focused on penalties. He was always a good penalty keeper before this, so they say. And he really honed in on this is going to be my thing. And Tuchel and and, and Mendy and, and Kappa had, had conversations prior to the game. And like, and I Because I heard this was his reasoning, and it's bad. But he was like <laughs> – we plan. This was sort of the plan. If it goes to penalties, and you don't know because you might have to use all five subs, but if you still have one, this is going to be the plan. Okay. Keppa is five inches shorter than Edward Mendy. <laughs> so as imposing as he may or may not be in the goal frame, he's that much less imposing than Edward Mendy is. Yeah. So, Fine. You bring him in, I first guessed the shit out of it. I was like, this is the, the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Um, it, it, uh, yeah, go ahead. And then with the second, and this is until the very end, this is my favorite part of the match. A lot of times you can, you know, you're dancing around on the line. You're trying to put the shooter off a little bit. He actively stood three steps to his right with when Virgil van Dyke went up to take, a Oh, shot. this was amazing. And he went, <laughs> he went, Hey, put it over my left shoulder on my right shoulder. I uh-huh. dare you. And van Dyke looked at him looked <laughs> through him with and disdain fired an absolute <laughs> rocket ship. That was the past, best part of the game. <laughs> past his right temple it was amazing. into the net. And then, Stared him Turned down. around and <laughs> stared him down for 40 yards all the way back. Virgil van Dyke went, do you, not only do you know who I am, who the fuck are you? It was, mwah. I, uh, uh, again, I do not care for Liverpool. I do not care for Van Dyke. Yeah. I that was the best part. shake that man's hand. So that I actually. Ha- awesome. All right. Uh, Aveline, I'm, I'm doing my podcast. Uh, we may have interruptions. Uh, I do have I have stats. You ready? Go for it. Um, Daddy, I lost my oh, okay. Uh, penalty kicks uh, attempted against Mendy, 28, only three saves. Penalty kicks against Kepa, I think it's 12 and 7. So we're talking about sample sizes that are minuscule. I'm right? not. I could buy. I could buy the, the Mendy. Uh, right. Uh, I, he's big and whatever. Now I, I don't, I, I thought more of this game. I, I thought the penalties were the sort of icing on a cake. I really loved all the missed chances. I mean, 
I mean, each team had guys just go clean through. I mean, Salah went yeah. clean through on a mistake by Mendy. He made a bad clearance. Um, uh, Mason Mount had two that he was clean through. I thought, I thought Havertz, Pulisic, um, Mount was a much better front three than more fluid than what they've seen with Lukaku all season. I'm not playing Lukaku anymore. Yeah. I want to see what those three have. I think the big thing for Chelsea is they don't, they're not consistent. Like just play the three guys. Play your three Smurfs, give them five games, and then change them. Let yeah. Lukaku stew and just be like, you're done. And then, uh, of course, the classic was Werner in on goal, passing it to passing it away when he didn't have the <laughs> shot. Because God, but he does make his penalty, so good for Werner. But I thought it was a really good game. Uh, Everybody Mane, made their penalty. The Mane save, everything. Everybody made their penalty. The other good one that I noticed, and of course, I, I was paying attention to it the whole time. Anything good that Chelsea did came down Trent Alexander-Arnold's side. I don't care what you say, Liverpool fans. The motherfucker, maybe it's the whole defense is so good that he's the weak spot and he's not bad. But the fact is, he gets spun around like a top every other attack mm -hmm. down his side. And they continue to defend him because his offense is so good. I know it's good. The ball to Mane was incredible. He's always great with those passes. I'm telling you, some motherfucker, he's going to lose you a game because he's standing straight up and gets spun around because yep. he does all the time. Oh, and there was a penalty... Somebody almost got their balls ripped off by a spike to the balls uh, mm -hmm. in the first half. That was Konate, not Konate. Who's the other? Keita and um, and Chalaba going for a, a clear 50-50 on review. It was very red. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, I'm glad they didn't because it would have been a shame if they'd be taken off. Had he been take, had he been sent off, there would have been no complaint. I mean, the guy had stitches in his leg after the game. Yeah. And they was really close to his dick. I mean, there was some, there's, there, I mean, there was manhood flashed before him. He must have been like, oh my God, I nearly lost a sack on this yeah. fucking kick from this tiny African friend of mine. But I thought Shalaba was really good. He fucking put Mane in his pocket. Like I was talking to my coworker and I was like, well, imagine if that had been Christensen out there, he would have gotten his fucking lunch eaten. Because, yeah. you know, Christensen's not going to get that done. Anyway, super fun game. It had to be yeah. Liverpool. It had to be the fucking Scouses and all that's great about football. Blah, blah, blah. You know, it drives us both nuts. You know, the idea, oh, they're all singing You Never Walk Alone in solidarity. I'm like, the Chelsea fans were not singing You Never Walk Alone. Fuck off. Yeah, right, right. right. <laughs> um, let's, and I, in that theme, look, <laughs> hey, all the talk is about Kepa and how he, you know, came in, was worthless, missed his. It Kelleher, was 11 penalties. It was incredible. <laughs> Kelleher was, for what as he bad. was. No, 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 no. Not as bad. I mean, over the course of the game, he I thought he was pretty great. Yeah, he was good. And then, I mean, of course, he stood up and made his penalty, but to, to force Kepa to have to miss his. But uh, have you, I don't know if I've ever seen that many consecutive penalties. It was incredible. 21 consecutive penalties. I don't know what happened. I think you go around again. Yeah. Yeah, That's right. it just keeps going. So anyway, I don't that know was... I, what I was curious, and I'm glad I'm glad that Kepa he skied. missed it. <laughs> I, that was the most perfect ending for me, actually. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. what I don't know, and I'm curious, and I hope we almost found out was if you then have the same order or if you can mix it up again. I would imagine it's got to be they got to lock it through. You just have to go again. That why would you get to reshuffle? Like... Why not? That's too much time. What are you gonna have another? You gonna you gonna have half time and redo the whole thing? No, because as I've said many times, do I get another, another sub? Can I change the keeper again? No, no, no. What I'm saying is, instead of having so, let's see, Liverpool had Milner, Fabinho, Van Dijk, Trent, uh, yeah. and so on and so forth. In that order, they would want Salah to go first. They would want Jota to go next. They would want. Oh you know yeah, I mean? yeah, so, yeah. I understood. So, understood. So and again, after not getting a shot in the Afcon final. He, I mean, there was a chance he didn't get a, get to go. I don't, and I'll never agree with putting your best player last yeah, because yeah. there's a, there's the chance and risk that you're not going to uh, to get him to shoot. And even more, when I was watching this penalty shootout, I was doubling down on that theory to my wife who didn't give a fuck. Um, <laughs> but actually, she Poor thought Jeff. it was very compelling. She was like, "Holy shit, this is awesome!" Um, and that's why <laughs> I married her. Uh, it was, it was, it was, I couldn't imagine being a fan of one of those two teams and my heart would have been in my mouth. I wouldn't um, have watched it. I would have just run away. <laughs> the more value is in putting, like, it's, it's a, it's a, 
a staring contest. That's all penalties is, right? So if you can make your enemy flinch and then potentially blink, like yeah. if you have your best players go up there and your best players therefore have the most probability of scoring. Hmm. Uh, and, and, and by the way, Van Dyke, Trent, and Salah, you could have had two goalies in the in the net, and they weren't going to stop those. You know, what, you know, I, I thought I thought the only ones that were poor, I mean, was Konate who almost got it saved. But I just kept I kept thinking as they all went up, I was like, wow, all these guys are good. Like there's yeah. no, there's nobody that you felt like was gonna was a bum. I oh, mean, I, I, I sort thought of, um, I thought Konate would miss. I thought Harvey Chalaba. Elliott would miss. Shalaba, I thought would miss. Dude, Shalaba looked. Shalaba and Konate were like, uh oh. Like, <laughs> well, Shalaba uh, nearly had his dick chopped off, so his leg yeah. was definitely hurting. Like yeah. he was not okay. Uh, no, the fact absolutely. that he was still out there was pretty. Crazy. I thought I thought Lukaku would sky it, so that was oh my, my first. Oh my god! Hope. If, if Lukaku had missed, it I was like, it would like when Kepa came in. I never in a million years was like, yeah, Kepa's gonna get a shot. I was like, I yeah, hope yeah, Lukaku yeah, exactly. fucks this up. Yeah. Oh, the other uh, thing Alonso that I kept looked wor- great. Yeah, it was all. It was it was really really a fun game. Uh, I. You know, I, I, that's what good football is about. And unfortunately, it had to be two teams that we hate and two teams that narrative dictates that was great. Uh, I think the world was rooting against Chelsea, especially the Abramovich stuff that you're going to talk about on Thursday. And then, of course, uh, you know, the game prior was the the other controversy the weekend was City's game versus Everton. And we had a handball basically at the end of the game. It was really a nondescript game. I will give a lot of credit to Everton. They were very good. They played with the crowd. They fought City really hard. City were disjointed because, again, it's a weak link sport and John Stones is paying left back. Mm-hmm. So everything was off. The runs that, that Walker would do to create space were never there. Everything just didn't work. Right. And um, and Everton were in in City's face and had the better chances early in the game and could have lost this game. There's no doubt about it. But uh, City get a goal. Uh, I actually was a. I was literally in the process of tweeting in like the 88th minute or late in the game. Wow, this is Michael Keane's best game. Lo and behold, he fucks it up because he's terrible. And if if I'm sure if I was on Everton boards or Everton uh, board, if you're an Everton fan, let us know how much you hate Michael Keane. Every time I watch him, he fucks something up. He's fucking terrible. So when you have a bad center back, it's awful. It's like he's a shit Harry Maguire, and Harry Maguire's shit. It's weird so. <laughs> how parallel it's said a lot. Like Everton and Spurs supporters have like a kinship and like, cause they have the, the red enemy. They have yeah. the Spursiness. Like you know, Everton has that. Historically city and Everton also have a, have a kinship. There's when they were both kind of the same level of shit. Yeah. yeah Although yeah. Everton are a much bigger club to be fair. They've never been relegated and they are in the relegation zone. Like they that are is in not the fight. a fight. They no, are in, in it. And we're going to cover that in a minute. But the controversy is, Randomly, late in the game, ball uh, ball gets kicked downfield, uh, uh, and and Richarlson, who has just never stopped running, never stopped going down, got the shit beat out of him by City. He he gets on the ball. There's a rebound, and inexplicably, Rodri just plays the ball with his arm. <laughs> it's yeah. just like, what the fuck are you doing? Uh, it's not great. It is in a gray zone. I would say it's it's. About an inch down from a t-shirt sleeve. Is no. that about right? If and, uh, it's a handball, uh, it's a handball. <laughs> it's a handball. Oh, of course it's a handball. Yeah. But the call on the field, they go to VAR on the field. The referees, after they go to VAR, says, "Oh no, it was offside. You should have never checked it." But the MS NBC in the US, they drew the lines, but they were not the official lines they drew their own line they were like oh it was offside but then the premier league was like no it wasn't offside that's not handball like they had the out and they're like no it's fucking it's we couldn't tell we couldn't tell because it was up high i'm like this is about as handball as handball gets and the re- and you showed me that picture from the champions league final they had changed the rules since then i know they have. So yours was they still have. a handball that was the armpit no. shot into no. uh I'm no. sure it was dead. No, it wasn't just oh no, it was Sissoko. It, no, it was Sissoko. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, 37 <laughs> seconds into the game. Yeah, fantastic. Thanks. Yeah. That was great. Way to fuck up the game. Um yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, at least he wasn't sent off. Uh but anyway, City dodge a bullet. 
<laughs> Lampard is cl- gives a classic end of the game interview. He's like, my three year old daughter could see that was a handball. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> and the CEO of the team is is demanding an apology to Everton Football Club, who at this point you wouldn't think so. They fucking need that point. Badly. Yeah, no, it's a big point for them. And, um, and they played well. And I think that the bigger takeaway is while that might be deflating, they can feel good. They played really well. And if they play like that, they're not going down. I don't think they're going down either. Uh, somebody is, is the problem. <laughs> okay. And we say, you know, it, it's foolish of me to try and handicap this race at this point because it does. Oh, change. who knows? And it, again, it's you're always it's gotten, two, you're two wins away from not going down. Yeah, well, and and Newcastle now four out of five. Wow, I mean, it, yeah. they're 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 now safe as by virtue of the fact that there are three teams between them and the drop zone, mm-hmm. right? So oh, they're not Brentford going they're Leeds. They're, they've they've they're gone. They're safe. Brentford and Leeds. I'm scared for you guys. I really am mm-hmm. because not only can Burnley catch Everton, Burnley can catch both of them quite mm-hmm. easily. Mm-hmm. With one win, they have three games in hand on Brentford, and they have three points to chase. Mm-hmm. And they have the dual difference. And they have Leicester on Tuesday, tomorrow. Ooh. And they're a great team at heading balls. And they're going against what is potentially the weakest defense you could go against. They're going to score. You you want it? Let's look at the bet. Go bet on Burnley scoring a headed goal. I mm. book it. Book it. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that is about as money as a goal. Vague horse to score on a header. Just bet it I, wow. I, or me or Tarkovsky. Any of those dudes, they're scoring a headed goal against against Leicester. It's just mm-hmm. happening. Even yeah. if they lose, just go for the headed goal. Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, probably gonna... piece. Yeah. So yeah. so we have we have leads actually setting the record for goals against in a month in the Premier League. They really <laughs> have been getting the doors blown off them to the point that. They didn't want to sack Bielsa. They gave him every chance not to. They and really they just get the shit kicked out of him. It's so weird. So they do fire him. It's weird because Spurs, as we've said many times, are uh, maybe the best counterattacking team in the league. Mm-hmm. But that's, you know, they're they're the most comfortable when they have an even split of the game, but you're trying to, you know, really get after them and they can hit you on the break. Let's be very clear about something. Nine minutes into this game, Ryan Sessegnon te- oh teamed up with Matt Darty. One of my to sons. Score oh, the Chris, a goal. the Chris Cross across the field. Fan fucking tactic. It was great. It was amazing. I, when he scored, I was like, oh, that was Kulisevsky. And I was like, oh, it's, it, uh, it's Matt Darty's first goal for Tottenham. Hey, He's been here for two years. That's what you thought you were getting. No, well, yes. But like, at the same time, I just I, – I was like, Weeds, get it together, man. Like, holy <laughs> shit. And then Kulisevsky hits the second one, and you're like, all right, this could get ugly. Yeah, and um, it did. <laughs> yeah, because, listen, Leeds never blink when they give up a goal. That they happens. Don't care. Yeah, they They're don't like, care. whatever, we'll get it back. And the problem is that recently – and they almost pulled it all the way back against United yeah, recently. Yeah. But, like, I don't know. I, there's just – Yeah. And, after and what- the second one, you can tell – look – it's like a boxer. Like they're like, they're like Rocky, right? Mm-hmm. They're really good at taking punches, but after a while they add up. Right. Yeah. And so every time the opposition lands one, every time Clubber Lang catches him with, with a hook, he stands there, but he wobbles a little bit and you could feel Ellen road after the second goal from Kulisewski, who loves a, sh- uh, um, um, a near post shot. I've noticed that I'm very interesting. A big Big fan of what he possibly could be. He's all potential and, and, you know, no substance yet. But he's, I mean, he's been pretty good returns so far. But Leeds, they're just, they're they're like bleeding out slowly. And it's yeah. hard to watch. But I, so I now think, Jesse Marsh comes in and I'm, I'm very, I'm, I'm hopeful. I'm excited. But I think, I think the key thing was, you know, if you would have told me after that 3-2 in West Ham in mid-January that they were going to go down, which that 3-2 against West Ham was one of the games of the season the hat mm-hmm. trick by Harrison. If you would have told me that they were going to basically not t- just disappear, like they were going to give up 30 goals in the next 10 games. I mean, it, it, it's inconceivable. And the issue is, is that they would give up goals, but they would always score, right? They'd have the four, two against exactly. United, but it's four against Tottenham, six against Liverpool, three against Everton without yeah. scoring. 
it, the issue isn't the defense which is really bad. The issue is they're not scoring. Like yeah. they needed to keep scoring to even have a chance and they can't score. Uh, well, we always I, said I, I think, uh, yeah, when they lost version of like yeah. 13, 14 Liverpool, right? I mean, right. Except really now more, they're really bad. Yeah. Right. But what proves it more than giving up a touchdown to current present day Liverpool? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so Bielsa goes, I think the, the thing is, is that there's clearly a plan in place where Marsh was identified as a coach who fits in with what they want to do with, with Bielsa. It's not going to be such a big transition. Marsh comes from Red Bull, comes from Ragnick, comes from the German school, the ganging pressing, the, the Hasenhudel. It's going to look more like Southampton than, yeah. than the, what you saw at Bielsa. Leads. Big, yeah. Then leads. But what was happening with Bielsa is the man marking just wasn't working because what you saw from the great pass from the incredible pass from Harry Kane for the last uh, goal, he uh, would just drop deep. The, the center backs would follow him and it would happen to every single team. They'd be like, oh, no, you got to go with him. And then she, like, teams would just run through the space. Like, there he goes. Yeah. <laughs> What's happening? Yeah. So it would work against shittier teams where they could outscore them. But that one nil against Newcastle really put the put the end to them and they gave him every chance and he was just getting dogged but uh bielsa leaves leads as a legend he still is completely loved they all love him they all went to ellen road to say goodbye yeah he goes out with his head high even though he's never won anything this is where football is more interesting and i, I was listening to a podcast today it's you know if it's just about trophies then support one of the five or six clubs who win trophies if it's just about grinding out one nil results, then just check the score at the end of the day. <laughs> but <laughs> if it's about entertaining, you and I have talked about it. Leeds was must see TV. They were great. Win or lose. Yeah. And so we lose that. And, and we, it's we, why, yeah, we're, we're sad we pour, to we, see we him We pour go. a little out for Bielsa. Yeah. Yeah. What, did I we get did. that on my dick? I think it did. There you go. <laughs> on your stitches. Um, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, I just it, it it reminded me a lot of when Pochettino got fired because you knew it had to take you had to be done. You didn't want it. It was like taking an old uh, you know an old dog out back sort of thing. And you're like, no, I just one more day. No, you can't. It's, it's gotta it's gotta be today. It's gotta. Yeah, be I mean, today. You, I, you probably could have kept him in it. It just it, it it in the case of Levy, he knew it was more expensive than. Wow, than I was, the uh, don't even get me started. But the point is that the <laughs> the. And it's the, un, it's unfair to be also because they were so hurt. They just like no oh, Bamford sure. all year, no nothing. They just half their guys were out all year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but they've. I mean, they've still got. They, but they had to be a little bit more pragmatic, right? Like, at, at some point, he and was I know never going to do it. I know, and this goes against exactly all of his ethos and everything. But like a little, a little bit, right? Never. So, that's the beauty, yeah, right? So it's they, the oh, romanticism. Yeah, it's. No, no, no. We're going down. Da- we're doing it this way, and we're going down. With- I think Leeds fans would have gone down with him. They were ready. They have the second worst goal difference in the in the league right now. Yeah, and I know. that is it's impressive. Important. It's impressive, <laughs> but it's also important for where they are right now. If they were oh, still yeah. in twelfth, it would be ha ha ha. That's hilarious. Poor Bielsa. That's sad. But now, <laughs> yeah, that I might know. be the reason they go down. Yeah, not because they it, haven't it, lost all these games. It, like, ha- it has happened. Oh, they God, do not. They they are now level with uh Watford on worst expected goal difference which is uh even crazier well they're even worse so they so this is the difference right they are they're minus 31 but their expected goal difference is only minus 50 yeah they had so they're actually giving up more against Spurs okay they had two goal posts they had a po- a ball where Loris had misplayed it at like 30 yards away from goal where he is not good he's great in the box but outside he's a mess he plays it, I forget who it was, comes in down the left and like hesitates. There's no goalkeeper. Ben Davies is uh no, it wasn't even Ben Davies. One of the one of the center backs is standing in the net, worthless. And Ben Davies comes swooping in like the flash and blocks the shot. And you're like, what what are you guys doing here? Some of us had both teams to score. What the fuck are you doing, Leeds? Uh, Mel- Melier is the, oh, I mean, obviously when you're, when you have the worst goal difference like that, Melier, the goalkeepers are now the least lucky or least shot stoppy. I don't get the sense that Melier is that bad, but no. the shot expected saves are bad for them. They're just playing a lot of bad luck. They're getting no luck in scoring. 
So, you know, it, I, you could make the argument that maybe they should pull the goalkeeper and change him. It's the easiest thing to do. Maybe that would have changed their luck or they're just giving up really, really no, awful fucking the chances. The chances they're giving up are yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. just like it's one not on one destructive. Now we have two games here that were not great to watch, but are interesting for the top four race. The nil-nil uh, Watford, it's just laughable that United just can't, fucking get past Lee Watford who are literally the worst defensive team in the league. And then West Ham getting back on track, getting their goal from Suchek scruffy. And again, it can't go past every week. (laughs) Declan Rice is just a fucking beast. (laughs) Like whoever gets him. And I don't know. And I hope it's not Chelsea. And I hope actually, I hope it's Chelsea because you know what? Tuchel's such an asshole. He'll fuck it up. Because he's like, oh, we have to do something different and make you not do what you like to do. But what I'd really like to see, what I think the world would like to see, is two English midfielders together. Him and fucking Connor Gallagher in the midfield for Chelsea. And it would be fucking beefy Englishness with all that flair up front. If they do that, they're fucking geniuses. And maybe the Abramovich thing falls apart and they both have to come back. Oh, my God. Or they'll both. Whoever gets Kelleher and if someone is smart enough to sign Kelleher and Rice, I'll just be like, I might have to. I might have to. I might. Gallagher. Sorry. If someone signs Gallagher and Rice together as like Chelsea homeboys, I might I might have to be like. I might have to use like incognito mode and a VPN and just put on Chelsea shirts on videos and just wear a mustache and just be like, look at the me. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I love those two guys. The Englishness, it just, it's it's why we like the Premier League. It's it that style. Out of both of them. It really yeah, does. Yeah, yeah. But Rice willed <sighs> the team to win so many good moments. Uh, him and Suchek, they had another good sort of, um, another cool moment for, for Yarmolenko who actually left and went to the Ukraine and be like, not that he's playing. I mean, David Moyes is like, kind of helps. Just why don't you stay there for a while? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're giving out AK 47s. You might as well just go yeah, have uh, one. Yeah. Have one. Have at it boil. Uh, so he goes and that happens. And then do let's cover, let's cover the, let's cover the relegation fight between Newcastle gets their win. We're worried about Brentford and Dyche gets their draw against uh, Crystal Palace. Hey, Deich, of course, they only take one shot versus Crystal Palace. The fuckers. And Dice has them one point off of Everton, oh, and they've got. Is. If they get another draw and Everton drops out of the game, Everton falls into the relegation zone again. I don't think, like you, I don't think that they'll be the third team. They're too um, good. And by the way, Watford still has a, has a shot. I, I I mean, I'm not. I'm not. No, it's, it's very close. I mean, it is extremely close. I, I mean, everybody. Watford, I, Watford, I think, are up. definitely shit. <laughs> I mean, sorry, well, yeah. uh, uh, Nor- Norwich. They don't even no, have well, Norwich. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and again, it it comes back to I've harped on this pretty much every episode for two months, if not two years. Uh, <laughs> games in hand, and Watford and Norwich don't really have any aside from on Brentford, so they don't really have any get out of jail free cards. Whereas Burnley still has two. Um, yeah. And that's where you look at it, and that's why I think Everton will probably be okay. Uh, they'll fall ass backwards into points somewhere. But if I if you had to pick one, it's like a, a fuck Mary kill for relegation, right? Um, Brentford or Leeds, who stays and who goes right now? I'd rather have Leeds than Brentford. No, no. Who do you think? But who do you think? Stays? Oh, who do I think? If Burnley catches, oh, here, 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 actually, actually, here's what I thought. I think one of the things that's happened with Brentford is the injury to the goalkeeper and no Tony. I think they're yeah. getting back Tony. They've got mm-hmm. the goalkeeper. He's got to get back into form. I've got to believe that Erickson connecting in that midfield, even if it's only part-time, with Tony will make a difference. And Tony will find a way. Because what was happening to them was their get out of jail was to kick it to Tony, and he'd, he'd take the pressure off the defense. Whether he did anything with it, that value of kicking a ball up to a guy who will fight for second balls uh, is invaluable. Mm-hmm. And they didn't have that, so they couldn't get out, and so the defense was getting exposed. Yeah. And those breathers that those strikers give you are massive. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's one of the things that happened with, with Newcastle as well. Newcastle, all of a sudden, their defense got better because they knew they could just kick it up to Chris Wood, and he'd give them 10 seconds. He'd yeah. give them 15 seconds to push up, 
get organized. Even if there was a second ball that they lost, at least they were reset. And so everything connects, right? Like I, I know I talk about it. I sound crazy, but it is a weak link sport and you could defend from the front. Even a hold up striker who doesn't score goals is actually super fucking valuable. If he gives you 10 seconds. Yeah. So you're picking Brentford to stay. And that makes I want my, them to stay. I want them I, to stay. Uh, I mean, I want who's in the bottom three to go down. That group. all right. Well, hold on though. <laughs> and, and I'm gonna sound like a, a dumb fuck, but isn't Burnley starting to become a little likable? They beat my team last week. Let me be very clear of about course, this. Of like, course they're life likable, but I don't want them. Do I have like Burnley? Do I have yep. Burnley Stockholm syndrome? Is this what's going I on? Think, here? No, they are likable. I think uh uh Weigout and Cornet made them fun. And yeah. they they're playing better. Oh, they're playing. They're playing angry. They're yeah. playing. Well, no, like, this is th- this is what I mean. This is what Dai- this is in Daesh we trust. He finds the energy. The team right. is like, okay, we we're fucking around for a half. It's now we're ready. We got the COVID out of the way. Now it's less like Ben Me and Tarkovsky are just like, this is our team. I've been in a Premier League for nine of the last ten seasons. If any of you people fuck this up. I will kill you. I'll kill your families. Yeah, right, I'll right, kill right. Your families. Listen, you fucking Dutch guys. You don't understand. This is life or death. This is my town. I've been here my whole life. For Ben Me and Tar- for Ben Me, he was a Manchester City Academy graduate. Do you know how close fucking Burnley is to Manchester? It's literally like Long Island to to Manchester. It's up the road. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. There's like 14 teams inside the Manchester City area, and Burnley is one of them. And so mm-hmm. Ben Me does not fuck around, and Tarkovsky is. I know he's English, but his name's Tarkovsky. That means he's Polish. That means he's tough. His head is gigantic. He petrifies me. Uh, I, I think Burnley stay up as much as I don't want them to. I really want to see Cornet score another goal and connect with Veghorst. That is just my dream. Is to they're, see those they're fun. I, I'm enjoying them. I That's really good. Am. Well, you get, we can watch them on Tuesday <laughs> against we, we Leicester. Can. That actually is going to be good. It's going to be a good uh, – yeah. I uh, because, because Leicester oof. have to start – like. If you know, it's funny. I was going to say, they need to channel 13, 14 Liverpool. I'm like, they have the coach. Just go. <laughs> <laughs> Just yeah. stop trying to sit on, on leads. Just attack. Never stop attacking. Win 5-3. Because if you get a two-goal lead, you're going to give it up because you stink. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I do say that about um, my guy. Uh, I can't remember his fucking name anymore. Who, who's the goalkeeper I keep killing on their team? They're only goalkeeper. On, on Leicester? Yeah, my brain's melting. Oh, uh, Schmeichel. Schmeichel. So I'm like, Schneider? Schneiderlin? Well, that's Morgan Schneiderlin. Yeah, I mean, we don't really have much to talk about, but I just remembered we have games on Saturday. Well, we've got got the FA Cup, too. We have the FA Cup. That's what I was going to say. What we have for the FA Cup is not much, but we do have the FA Cup itself. So tomorrow, randomly, so Burnley and Leicester are playing – also, Peterborough, I don't know where that is, play Manchester City along with Crystal Palace playing Stoke City. So some old friends and some new friends. We also have your beloved Tottenham Hotspur mm-hmm. playing Middlesbrough. I hey, think they got to be careful. Yeah. I would be worried. <laughs> this mm-hmm. is a good team. <laughs> yeah. And okay, look, I've... let's be clear. I mean, Spurs have, because we have a hot potato race for the, for, for the top four officially now, right? Like United yeah. don't want it. Uh, West Ham can't figure it out. Arsenal have the inside track as we were talking about offline, but um, you know, Spurs are in the race still, despite their best efforts. So um, <laughs> they don't have, this isn't the only thing they have to play for, but it is certainly the only chance they have at a trophy. So I think that they'll go full bore. I don't think that, um, that, that Conte will take this lightly. Um, no, he won't. He won't. He should but go yeah, I just, uh, it's going to we'll be a see. good game. We'll see. I, I, I have, I mean, are you ready for one of these classic? Because the FA Cup is the oldest continuous yes. tournament in world football. Started in 1876. You ready? Including no, replays, ready. Tottenham have never lost to Middlesbrough in the FA Cup. Four oh, wins, boy. two draws. Through oh, those boy. two draws, though, those two draws came as the away side in February 1905 and January 2020. <laughs> you remember. <laughs> Yes. Oh, I actually know. I remember the January 2021. Yeah, that I was love not the good. 19, I love the February 1905 just getting 1905. thrown 1905. Yeah, they didn't get drawn out of the hat at the same time. The the sorting hat of the FA Cup. By the way, for people, <laughs> for our American friends who are uninitiated, 
uh, the FA Cup is just the coolest fucking thing. It's so cool that the NBA is trying to do it and they're going to ruin it. But they it's are. every team in England, 792 teams enter. One man leaves. <laughs> Let's talk about that for a second. because uh, yeah. And I'm not a big basketball fan, but I'm curious to take on this. The yeah. Knicks, yes. right? If the Knicks are not in the playoff picture and they're in the whatever the fuck FA Cup third round. It's it's the it's the it's the uh Stern Cup. Sure. <laughs> for the dead for the dead yes. former commissioner. Yes, that's actually a I would argue that's a pretty appropriate name for the trophy. Um <laughs> would because he made the NBA what it is today. Imagine yeah, having the David, the David Stern Cup, let's call it yeah, that. Sure. Uh two things. A do they go harder for this than they do for a potential playoff spot? Okay. And B, if they succeed and they win the Stern Cup, yeah. how is that received by players and by fans? I think it's something that you should do. You make it you give you give the team choices for what they get. They can either the players can either get money, extra mm-hmm. money, which is probably not that interesting. I think they could get extra ping pong balls for the draft. Ah. Ah. <laughs> I like that. Or um what else could they get? Money Ping pong balls. You could get no. You could you could fuck around with the playoff structure. You could say, uh, basically, think of it like Europa League. No, no, it's got to be separate. It's got to be separate. Like not why? part of the league. I don't think why? you connect it to the league at all. No, no, no. Well, well uh, I mean, think about it, right? Like if you win the FA Cup, you automatically get a Europa League spot. Oh, I see what you're saying. You saying that if they you reserve a playoff spot for a team that wins the cup. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but yeah. The, the, pro- the problem with, with basketball is there are no upsets. Although if it's a one game, if, if it's only one game. one game, then you could get a weird team. But they would and just here's get the blown thing. out. If – think – okay. Oh, well, here's if, what they could do. You could the, – because they now have a play-in, you could get into the play-in. Right. Uh, oh, they have play-ins and shit now? Yeah, they made a play-in from uh, – uh, they have uh, 10, 10 plays, 8. Nine I'm plays. trying so hard to respect the NBA. I'm really trying, guys, yeah. and I can't. It's just for, ah, oh my god. Anyway, it's it's fun. It does. It, it has the same problem the NHL has, it's which ridiculous. is regular seasons not mattering because they devalued their own product. Uh to an extent. To an extent. The like, the no the NBA is different in the sense that they're like we don't want to play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that part's bad. Well, but. The NBA is a strong link sport, so it's worse, right? There's yes. less team ethos. You know, if if the if if the Capitals come out and Ovechkin wants to go t- suck on Putin's toe, you know, they can still play without Ovechkin and still who, be the Capitals. Who by, yes, and who, by the way, is catching all types of shit because he's not saying anything. There is no right answer and only a sea of wrong answers because yeah. he has family still in Russia. Well, so that's what I he should know. say. He should be like... Ixnay on the talking about family, eh? Uh, everything's fine. Yeah. Not yeah. if you're not look, if you're okay. <laughs> look, you're being asked to join in the chorus. Yeah, of you, but you're because the, people renouncing your home you're country. American. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Renouncing your home country. Yeah. And in doing so, endangering the lives of friends yeah, and family you, you have you back it. home. Because you don't know what, for what? Kind of mobsters. Wait, for what? For what? For some for, fucking for, retweets? For some, yeah, for some virtue points. No, it's Jesus. I, I think he, I think he has said he condemns it, but not directly. Of course, yeah, of course. By the way, Artemi Panarin, one of the also really like prominent Russians, he's on the Rangers. Is a joke about how he uses a flip phone because he's an enemy of the state back home. <laughs> all right, because he openly criticized Putin. He uh, Navalny. He's a big supporter of Navalny, and oh, he wow. said as much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, "Fuck Putin. This is my guy," and everybody went, "Hey." We're gonna kill your sister. Like, <laughs> like this is. <laughs> hey, the war comes home real fast. Let's go through some yeah. more of that fifth round. So, uh, Stoke Palace, your team, Chelsea play Luton Town. I don't know where Luton Town is called, uh, but it sounds interesting. I like the idea. I would think that Chelsea's gonna mail this game in, having just played 120 minutes and had their whole fucking team go to war. Uh, mm-hmm. I would imagine that Luton Town's going to get a nice, easy, breezy game. Probably the toughest and most interesting matchup is Southampton and West Ham. Two teams that probably want to try and win this thing and go as far as they can. Yeah. Uh, I like this game. That's on Wednesday. Liverpool, Norwich City. Liverpool will also play the C team against Norwich. Uh, no doubt about that. The biggest team in this is Boreham Wood against Everton. Boreham Wood, of non-league, they are the lowest-ranked team 
in the system. They are in the National League North. In fact, when I click on the standings for Boreham Wood in uh, Google, there's no information. (laughs) (laughs) That's how low down they are. I can't even find them. Uh, They're not even, they don't even appear. So Boreham Wood, uh, they, they are still in the league. They're still there. They are, I think, the number one defense in all of England. So they don't give up shit. So Mm -hmm. that is what good teams do. They fight to the end. They won't give up anything, but they probably don't have the quality. But uh, as long as Michael Keane plays, I worry for Everton. And then, of course, we have the classic Nottingham Forest versus Huddlesfield. Both those teams playing well in the championship, both with some decent history. Huddersfield, 1931 and 32, two-time first division champions. Also the... um, the home team of, uh, of um, oh, fuck, I can't remember anybody's name. Uh, Jean-Luc Picard, the actor, I can't remember his name. And, uh, you know, right. formerly in the Premier League. Uh, but, yeah, that's the FA Cup. Not really a lot to write home about. You'd expect the big boys, City to go through, Chelsea to go through, Liverpool to go through. The same three teams weirdly keep showing up, along with uh, your friends uh, in Tottenham. But we'll end up probably with a Chelsea Liverpool or a City Liverpool, especially as long as these matchups keep getting easier and easier. Uh, we're getting into the round of 16 and we are there. Mike, anywhere you want to go. Yeah, I want to talk about Cristiano Ronaldo. Oh, yes, uh, of course. He, I'm looking at the non penalty goal scores in the Premier League this year. Okay. He's not good. I'm looking at two through nine because I'm struggling with FB ref at the moment. Mo, Mo Salah, 15. Diego Jota, 12. Sadio Mane, 11. By the way, Liverpool score a lot of goals. Because you had to notice. They really fucking Sonny hit. with 10. Emil Smith Rowe at nine. And then you've got uh, tied with Rowe, Emmanuel Dennis, Jamie Vardy, who's been out since like, I don't know. The War know, of 1812. Since, since the last war, right? Um, <laughs> and Bruno Fernandez all at nine. And Bruno gets his, a, a fair amount of penalty goals, so fine. Then with eight, your boy Jared Bowen, Mikael Antonio, Raheem Sterling, and Connor Gallagher. Who did I not just say? Cristiano, Cristiano on, Ronaldo. He's on, he's on nine. On seven non-penalty goals. Oh, non-penalty, yes. Yep. He's not in the top 15? No. No. What is that? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve. He's 13. He's tied for 13th in non-penalty goals. What is in the water on that side of Manchester, it just look. Is it catching up with them? Is it uh, just because they have I, all the attacking talent in the world, right? and I he's think, always I, the man demanding the ball in the box? I think that he has missed a couple. I think that he is thirty-seven years old, and to use the greatest of all sports cliches, what is it, Mike? Father time is undefeated (laughs) and you know between he and Zlatan you know we know he's taking care of his body yes he's still great but he's not great enough to be the every game striker for Manchester United Uh, he has had he has had moments he had good goals early in the season especially when you know they thought they were going to change the world with him and he got on some balls and he has won them some games especially here and there it's not that he's not great but when you look when you look at all the players born in the Premier League and you sort by year born, there's guys before you get to the year Cristiano was born, which is um, 1985, there's mm-hmm. 514 players ahead of him. Right, right, right. <laughs> right? There's, no, only, there's only 10 players older than him. Fernandinho. And, and it should be said, he, for what they actually ended up paying, uh, I guess, the fee for, not the salary. Not much, not much. Seven million. goals isn't that bad of a return, especially given the points that he's given them. Right? I do, I do think though that his mobility and lack of he, his his lack of mobility, pace, and power anymore. I still, I still think he's lethal. Like if he was but, playing the way Danny Ings plays, that would be fine. Or if you know he was playing, we're... if he was playing for City, it would be fine. They'd have to change the way they play, but. The fact that Liverpool, I mean, that that Manchester United have so many young players who can run and still, like, play up the middle and attack, he limits their options. He limits the way they play. They can't mm-hmm. they can't be as flexible. They can't play Rashford, Alanga, and, and Sancho. I mean, that would be a good grouping, uh, as the, despite the fact that Rashford might be 
a mess because he got hurt and is out of form. But, you know, they did move on from Marshall. I think you loved Marshall two years ago when he scored 20 goals in that yeah. first that first Ole season when it was like, oh, happy days are here again. And I think that they never really intended to 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 sign Ronaldo. We talked about this early in the year. They got duped. He has a good agent. He created a fucking market when there wasn't one. Mm -hmm. Somehow tricked Manchester United into thinking City was going to sign him. Whether they were or not, they should have let City sign him. It wouldn't have made a difference because City would have figured out, oh, we can't yeah. play the way we like to. <laughs> this sucks. Right. Right. <laughs> and like, um, when has City ever signed a 37-year-old? Never. Never. It's um, It's interesting to look at his stats because if you go just straight down the goals line – He's got, you know, in his last few years in Juventus, 20, uh, his first oh, year he had 21, been, been 31, good. 29. Hold on, though. In 2019-20 at age 34, he had 12 penalty goals. Yeah. He went 12 for 13 from the spot. So he had 19 goals, which, let's be very clear, from open play is a fantastic return. And then without looking, I'm sure that's very close to the top of the league. Juve won, won the set, won Serie A for the second consecutive year. But then they started to fall off, and it wasn't – his production wasn't – the thing that fell off, but the team around him was starting to fall apart. And Juve now is, is a disaster. Right. And so I wonder, and I don't watch Serie A nearly, I mean, much at all, nearly enough to, to say, but like, did we know that this is who he was before he signed for, if for you United? talk to Juve people? Yes. They yeah. Are. That's kind of what I think. Cause I remember seeing, what was the really dramatic Champions League game with him a few years ago? I forget. I think it was. Where he Atletico? got the hat trick and they lost anyway. They lost <laughs> Atletico, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, here's 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 the difference, right? Are you ready? From 2016 on, this is shots per 90: 5.7, 6.9, 5.7, 6, 5.2. Then he's down to three and a half shots per game. He yeah. needs to be shooting more mm -hmm. to score all those goals. He's yeah. a if he's a he's a he's a Kobe Bryant type. He's volume. He's got to be shooting. Yeah. And he's not taking those shots because he's not getting the space. And United just aren't. United don't possess the ball. When have you seen a a, a line splitting ball come from central midfield like a Tony Cruz might do, like a like a Luka Modric might do, like a Kevin De Bruyne might do? A ball coming from deep going into Ronaldo when he's on the move. It simply doesn't happen because it doesn't happen at United because they don't have the players to do it. It's got to go to Fernandez first. Fernandez got to survey. And by then, whatever advantage that Cristiano has had is already lost because he's too slow. Mm -hmm. I made that up, but it sounded good. <laughs> I don't. I don't know that he's too slow, but it's it's it makes. He's sense, definitely right? not as fast as he used to be. No, of course not. He's too slow for twenty-five-year-old Ronaldo standards, right? Of course. I mean, um, twenty-five. I mean, Real Madrid Ronaldo was you know he had nice. forty goals when he was twenty-five. By the way, he had forty-six <laughs> in his age twenty-six season. We're not going to see these numbers ever again. No, no, no. And he I had Messi broke sport. It's I gone. don't mean to say that <laughs> I expect world. him. I expected him to be the best player in the league. That's not what I'm saying. But what I did expect was 20. for him. I didn't expect three Liverpool players to be the top three in non-penalty goals, right? And goals from effectively from open play. And yeah, yeah. I just, uh, I, and frankly, I'm surprised Kane isn't closer to the top. I'm surprised your, Vardy, your although. You you did spend 10, 15 games with the least yeah no I know the worst I'm coach not, in the league. I'm, what I'm saying is when you look at the chart and you go, huh, Jared Bowen is ahead of Cristiano Ronaldo and and oh. uh, and and Harry Kane. He's one of that's, my sons that's, again. That's, but it goes back to it. Both those team Jared Bowen plays on a team with what a really good central midfielder who breaks mm -hmm. the lines and gets him the ball out no, wide know. when he's on the move. What does Harry Kane not have? Someone in uh, central midfield help. who breaks the lines and gets him out on the move. He has to Therapist. literally come get the ball, turn around, hit it to someone, and then run into the box and have it come back to him. He, he, probably, also, he, he has to be the 9 and the 10. I lied. He probably has a great therapist. Um, yeah, yeah. So if, if, if Ronaldo had Trent Alexander-Arnold fucking pinging wings from three quarters inside the half, just going, boo, 
those right. nuclear bombs he drops. <laughs> he, he, they're so incredible. I fucking hate him for it. Yeah. Or 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 someone like Cancelo just weaving things in, getting to the byline, and him just standing there. Like if you don't think Ronaldo could do the fucking um, the 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 Raheem Sterling role where he stands in the back corner and just puts his foot down on the ground, a ball hits off of it, right. <laughs> and he scores twenty goals. <laughs> Actually, that's unfair to Raheem. He does a lot of other stuff. Anyway, we're getting near time. Let's Mike, get send me here. home. Yeah, that was the Squeaky Bum Time podcast with Mike Salerno and Laurent Fourteen. We are the football wing of the Chop Sports Network, and we record on Tuesdays and Fridays, and we made it to March. I can't believe it. So be sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts so you never miss an episode. And if you're listening on Apple, please write and review the show, especially when they're longer than a minute long, and we will make sure that doesn't happen. 